So let's look at the following example. Suppose an object with an unknown mass is resting on a frictionless horizontal surface and is attached to a coil spring. Now, 4 joules of work is required to compress the spring a distance of 0.2 meters. If the mass is compressed to that distance and is then released, it reaches a maximum acceleration of 17 meters per second squared. So, assuming simple harmonic motion, let's calculate in part A the spring stiffness constant and in part B the mass of our object. So, let's begin with part A. So, let's suppose we have a coiled spring attached to a mass and we compress that spring a distance of 0.2 meters. So when we compress the spring, we do work on that spring. In other words, we transfer 4.0 joules of energy into that spring and now that spring stores 4 joules of energy in terms of elastic potential energy. So recall that elastic potential energy, U, is equal to 1 half multiplied by K, our spring stiffness constant, multiplied by our displacement squared. Now, we are told that 4 joules of energy is transferred to our spring. So that means our U is 4 joules. Now, we know what the K is. It's 0 0.2 meters. So that means if we solve for K, getting the following formula, we can now plug in our values to solve for our spring stiffness constant. So 2 multiplied by 4 joules divided by 0 0.2 meters squared, our displacement squared gives us a spring stiffness constant of 200 newtons per meter. Now, knowing this spring stiffness constant, we want to calculate the mass of our object. So once again, let's suppose we apply a force onto our object and we compress that object, we compress the spring a distance of 0.2 meters. Now at that moment, we want to calculate the net force acting on the object. Well at that moment, when we let go of our box, our object begins to accelerate. And at that moment, the net force acting on the object, which is the maximum force acting on the object due to the restoring force of the spring, is equal to mass of the object multiplied by the object's acceleration. Now, because the force acting on the object at that compressed distance is the maximum force, that implies that our acceleration is also maximum, which is given by this acceleration. So if we find what our maximum force is acting on the object at that point, when our object is compressed, 0 0.2 meters, and since we know the max, a max, we can calculate what the mass is. So what exactly is the force acting on our mass when we compress our mass a distance of 0 0.2 meters? Well, it's the restoring force that's created by the spring, which obeys Hooke's law. So that means m times a is equal to k times x, where k is our spring constant, which we calculate in part a, and x is simply our displacement of the spring. So k times x is equal to m times a. We solve for m and we get the mass is equal to the product of the spring stiffness constant and the maximum displacement divided by our maximum acceleration. So mass is simply equal to 200 newtons per meter multiplied by 0 0.2 meters divided by 17 meters per second squared. So we plug that into a calculator and we get an approximate mass of 2.35 kilograms. So this is the mass of our object.